It is time for the first Chinese Grand Prix since 2019. Back then, Mercedes were the front runners, with Ferrari not far behind. But since then, there's been a big shakeup in regulations. And now, it's Red Bull at the front, with Ferrari still just behind. But Mercedes now find themselves as probably the fifth fastest car on the grid, with Aston Martin, McLaren ahead of them too. So it's very difficult to see how the grid's going to line up this weekend. But shall we get a look into this Chinese GP for the first time since 2019? Over recent years, the Chinese GP has been on the calendar, but has seen multiple cancellations as a result of restrictions in the country. We now find ourselves in 2024, five years on from the previous race here, and it is the first sprint weekend of the season. Now, I for one back Max Verstappen on this one. It sounds absolutely ridiculous that our first time visiting a track in five years is going to be a sprint weekend. However, it fills chances for opportunity. If a team gets it absolutely spot on from the jump, then they could find themselves much higher up the grid than they would have anticipated if it was a normal race weekend. You let me know your thoughts down in the comments what about what you think the grid's going to look like so hit subscribe while you're down there we're trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of april and i know that we can do it so hit that subscribe button down below or in this top corner and let's now get into the next part of the video should max verstappen win again this weekend he will have won i believe it is 50 percent of the races since the previous chinese gp now, Max Verstappen has been in a dominant Red Bull car since 2022. Now, some would even argue that 2021 was also a dominant year. You only have to look at the way they started the season. I believe they won eight out of the first 13 races of that 2021 season. So for me, Max Verstappen has been in race winning and championship winning material since 2021. And he has won 30 35, 40 races in that time period and it is absolutely crazy to think how much Max Verstappen has developed as a driver and how much Red Bull has developed as a team since the last meeting at the Chinese GP. It is another early get up for those of us in the UK with the sprint race starting at four o'clock in the morning. The first practice session and only practice session occurs at 4.30 on Friday. It's, it's stress. It's stress. These early get-ups, I'm not a massive fan. And I think it's difficult to get the season into momentum when you're having these early races. However, that is the way the calendar is lined up. And it looks similarly to being lined up that way next year with Australia taking the race weekend opener for Formula 1. Now, for me, it's a very, very important time of the season, the first few races. And I don't mind the early get-ups personally but i think it's hard to build momentum people aren't watching it live people would rather watch it on catch up and whatnot so it's really difficult now for me one practice session at the first time back it's going to be very interesting to see how the teams line up for me i think we could quite easily see another red bull brazil 2022 type performance where they really drop down the order now I don't think it would be track specific. I think if there was three practice sessions, I think they're going to be by far the best team. They're probably still going to be the best team this weekend. Like, let's not like joke about like at the end of the day, Red Bull have the best car on the grid by far. Ferrari is still two or three tenths behind. Now, obviously, people are going to come for me in the comments with, oh, but Quali's really close, and that's all right. Quali might be close, but races aren't. Like, yes, not everybody's getting lapped like they were in, like, 2014, 15, but there's no forward battle. Like, you can have as many people as you want battling for P11 or P10, but at the end of the day, what really matters is a battle for the championship and a battle for first place and the podium places, and we don't really have those at the minute. It's been a very good season for Carlos Sainz. He's found himself on the podium in every race he has competed in, and that's massive. Are Ferrari going to be able to get one over on Red Bull this weekend and win on merit, not on the back of a DNF? Now, I've, there's been some arguments over recent weeks about Max Verstappen's record when he finishes a race. Now, I think do not did not finish classes as a finish. Like, he still 
started and had to end. Now, he didn't complete the allocated laps. Now, there's something about that he's been in the points every race that he's finished since like 2018 or something. It might be further back than that. But for me, if you start the race, you have to finish at some point, whether that be on lap one with a crash into the barrier, whether it be lap 12 with a brake failure, you still finish the race. Now, you can let me know your thoughts down in the comments, but I just think that stat is wrong. I think it should be Max Verstappen is finished in the points every time he has completed the race, not finished the race, because I do think you finished the race, or every time he's completed every lap allocated along them lines. You get the gist. Now, over the past few weeks, there's been some interesting developments regarding Fernando Alonso. Now, you might have heard me a few weeks ago in a video where I said, I think there's potential that he could retire at the end of this season. Now, that has been thrown into the water as Fernando Alonso has signed a new multi-year contract to Aston Martin. Now, for me, I think that confirms that Max Verstappen won't be moving from Red Bull to Mercedes because I think that if that Red Bull seat had been open, Fernando Alonso would have took it. But I don't think he'd take it with Max Verstappen. And I don't think Horner or Helmut Marko would have allowed him to take it with Max Verstappen. We've seen many times in recent years, Christian Horner talking about the fact that he doesn't want two alphas in the car. He doesn't want two number one drivers. He said it like a year ago about Lewis Hamilton. He said it a couple of years ago about Vettel. I believe he's also said it recently regarding the interest of Fernando Alonso. Now, for me, I think you should have the best drivers possible in your car. Now, obviously, they wanted Lando Norris. Lando Norris isn't stupid. He knows he's not going to get the same opportunities at Red Bull. Now, do I think Norris should have taken the opportunity and the chance to overturn Max Verstappen? Absolutely. If it was me, I'd want to take the opportunity. But if you're looking at the bigger picture, it looks as if no one is going to get the same treatment as Max Verstappen while Max Verstappen is there. So I do get Lando Norris's... Uh, I do get Lando Norris not wanting to take the opportunity, but I do think it was a bad decision. Because if you go in and start beating Max consistently, like, you're going to end up as the number one. Like, but to beat Max consistently, you need to be given the same opportunities. You need to have everything. Like Now, we know in, in history... There's been contract clauses of second drivers. Has Max Verstappen got that in for the second driver at Red Bull? Who knows? Now, I do believe that with Fernando Alonso signing that new contract with Aston Martin, I do believe that that closes a door for Carlos Sainz. I thought Aston Martin was a potential option for him. Obviously, for me, it all depended on Fernando Alonso. If Fernando Alonso had gone to Red Bull or retired, I think that seat would have been Sainz's to lose. But as we've seen, Fernando Alonso has re-signed. I can't see Lance Stroll being moved on. I think pretty much everybody can agree with that. He'll probably stay in F1 until 35, 36, 37 when he decides to retire. Um, although Stroll could move into other series. I just can't see it happening unless his dad moves away from Formula 1. That then leaves Carlos Sainz with the options really of... Mercedes, Williams and Audi. I think, obviously, there's a lot of speculation at the minute regarding Logan Sargent's performance. And I think there is a big opportunity for Mercedes to chuck Kimi Antonelli into the Williams for the last six rounds of the season. I believe he turns 18 just before the Monza weekend, which I think will spell a swap. I think Logan Sargent will be moved on from Williams at that point. I think Kimi Antoinelli will take that seat until the end of the season. Then I think if Carlos Sainz is still available, which is obviously a big if and a but right now, because obviously Carlos Sainz wants to have his future secured. But if Carlos Sainz is available still towards the back end of the season, I think Mercedes will give Kimi Antoinelli that six races and say to Carlos, look, if we want Kimmy, we're taking Kimmy. But if we don't think Kimmy is ready, we want you. And obviously, Carlos Sainz is like, it'll probably hurt his pride, but he's ended up in this situation and he's got to deal with it. 
and is dealing with it the best way possible with his performances on track. Now, obviously, a lot of people will probably bat me off with this, but he's had a lot of help from Charles Leclerc and Fred Vasseur, especially with the Singapore win last season, with the Australia win. Now, obviously, we know Charles Leclerc uh, was told not to attack him. If he had attacked him, would he have gone ahead? Who knows? Um, so for me, I think the two options are going to end up being Williams and Audi. I think Mercedes is a 50-50 depending on what happens with Antonelli. I do think Mercedes should chuck him in the Williams, like get him in the Williams towards the end of the season, give him the last six rounds, um, six or seven rounds. Let's see what he can do. I do believe he has a test in the W11 um, or W12 soon if he's not already had it. So it'd be, I'd, I'd love to obviously hear the data from that, but I, obviously we probably won't. Um, and obviously Red Bull's an unlikely move for science. Can't see him going to Haas because that's like essentially you're going from Ferrari's main team to Ferrari's like sister team per se. It's not the same as Red Bull and uh, Cash App, whatever you want to call them. But it, they do have some sort of technical relationship. So it would be really a backward step with no sort of idea of getting back to the front. I think Audi is probably his best bet to get a seat confirmed like tomorrow. I think if he wanted that Audi seat, I think he, it's his to lose. Um, I think it will end up being Sainz and Bottas to start off at Audi. But then I do think that Zay Maloney, if he wins the championship, could he um, get that second seat? I think Bottas stays. I can't see them moving Bottas on, especially with his performances, given the situation. But obviously, this Chinese GP is going to be very interesting this weekend. Is it going to shake up the order with obviously only having one practice session? You'll have to let me know your thoughts down in the comments. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button. Let me know your thoughts on Carlos Sainz's situation, Fernando Alonso's new contract. And I'll catch you in my next video. Make sure to go and find me on TikTok, pictured here, and Twitter, pictured here. These are the places where I'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the Formula One and football weekend.